Today, let us look at the book of Luke, chapter 22, uh, 24. Chapter 24. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, we are now we, yeah, in the time of after retreat after Easter time. Yeah. So Jesus, uh, he resurrected from the death. Uh, he overcame all the, um, all the sin and death with the death. Yeah. With his death, then he overcame the death. And then he resurrected. Uh, so this time we want to look at the part um, how uh, Jesus revealed himself, uh, especially the two disciples who are uh, going to Emmaus. Yeah. Uh, actually, he revealed himself, but then their eyes were closed. They couldn't recognize Jesus. So, um, but then in the middle, uh, in the middle of the way. Yeah. They were going together with Jesus, but then they couldn't really recognize Jesus. But then uh, they could uh, later, they could uh, recognize Jesus. Uh, so how he opened the, their eyes to recognize Jesus. Yeah. So I, yeah, we were looking at this part, but then we want to look at it. Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> let us read the verse, verse 13. Mm, I read, that very, that, that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking about it talking about each other, about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. With them. But their eyes were kept from recogni recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to uh, him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before, before God, and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers believed him up to the command to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who redeemed, who redeemed Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Um, Yeah, so here then there are um, uh, the two disciples of Jesus. They were going to a village called Emmaus. Yeah. It was uh, seven miles, seven miles uh, uh, seven miles is uh, around, um, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, seven miles is uh, uh, somehow distanced, but then not very far. But anyway, they were going to that uh, village. Actually, they were in Jerusalem. They, were, they are the disciples of Jesus, even though they are not the 12 disciples. But then they were following Jesus. Yeah. They were good disciples, actually. One was... Uh, called Cleopas. 
his uh, he he and his wife they were all following Jesus and the wife was there when Jesus was crucified so they were the people who came to Jerusalem following Jesus so when Jesus was um, entering Jerusalem they were also coming together yeah. but then now these two disciples they are now going back to Emmao maybe Emmao could be their hometown so when is this after Jesus was crucified then they were so sad they were so sad because their, their Lord uh, has miserably uh, died. And then uh, the dream of the kingdom of God, it was, it, it was failed uh, because of their Lord died. You know? The death is just becoming nothing, right? So even though Jesus started this movement of kingdom of God, but then suddenly he was killed. So they actually, for them then, they were, they understood that this is failure. And they were, uh, in them then, great despair uh, came. So sad and despaired. So they were now going to Emmaus. And then Jesus was um, together with them. Maybe in the middle of that, their journey, Jesus was just entering, and then they were, he was hearing, and then, but then, strangely, they could not really recognize uh, Jesus. You know, if they were disciples, then they could uh, knew, they could know, they could know Jesus, right? But then. How come they couldn't uh, really know Jesus? They couldn't recognize Jesus. Yeah. Jesus was re Jesus re resurrected, and then this resurrection, uh, resurrected uh, body could be somehow different. Uh, um, yeah, not just like before, not just like physical body, uh, but then the new body. So they couldn't really recognize this uh, Jesus. So our resurrection could be the same. Yeah. If you read, if you want to know more about resurrection, you can read the uh, First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Yeah. That that is talking about resurrection. Yeah. So uh, our the natural body and. There is another body. Yeah. Uh, it's different. Yeah. So anyway, Jesus could uh, have somehow changed it. Uh, then anyway, these two disciples they uh, they couldn't recognize Jesus. Their eyes were closed. Uh, so Jesus was asking, "What are you talking about? You know, what you are." conversation is uh, about yeah. then uh, they said that you don't know this uh, what happened in in this uh, city you know? he said that uh, verse 18 then one of them named Cleopas answered him are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened mm there in these days yeah. so maybe this uh, this event uh, this crucifixion of Jesus it could be so famous uh, in the people in the city that's why you are only the visitor who doesn't know about what is happening in uh, what was happening in Jerusalem yeah. and then he said that, he said that uh, yeah. and he said to them what things and they said to him concerning Jesus of Nazareth a man who was a prophet 
mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. Uh, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Uh, yeah. So how they were understanding about Jesus, yeah. they, were, they knew uh, that Jesus is Messiah. Yeah. They said that um, Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was prophet, mighty in deed and word before God, yeah. he was mighty in deed yeah. and word. Yeah. So, and then, uh, we, verse 21, but we had hoped that he was the one who redeemed Israel. He was one, he was the one who, to redeem Israel. Yeah. So they believed that Jesus is the Christ, Redeemer, Savior. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yeah. So they believed that uh, Jesus could uh, save us. Uh, but, yeah, even though they understood like that, but about his death, they couldn't understand about it, actually. <clears throat> so, and then um, verse 22, Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those uh, who's were, uh, who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women said, had said. But him they did not see. Yeah. So surprisingly, uh, some women, uh, they, they reported that they saw angel, but not Jesus. Yeah. And then some others, uh, disciples, uh, they also found that uh, there is no, no one in the tomb. But then still, they were somehow, they did not really believe. <laughs> That's why they were going to Emmaus. Yeah. Then what did Jesus say? He said that, oh foolish ones. Yeah. He said, you are foolish. Yeah. And then slow over heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into the glory? Yeah. So you are slow of heart. Uh, slow of heart to believe all that the prophet and had spoken. Yeah. So uh, we need to uh, have faith, uh, faith in the word of God, yeah. all the prophets, uh, and the word of God. Yeah. So uh, Jesus was uh, like rebuking them, uh, and then he he was teaching them uh, about the prophets yeah, uh, and Moses. Yeah. So if we don't really understand and if we don't really believe in the word of God, uh, the written word. Uh, then we can also miss many things. We can, uh, we, we will be, uh, maybe we will listen that you are foolish and slow of heart. Yeah. So the word of God is supposed to be believed in our heart, actually. So about the um, resurrection, actually, they did not really know and uh, believed or yeah, 
it's <clears throat> so about the resurrection uh, let us look at Luke chapter 20 verse 27 He says that um, there came to him some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection. Uh, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, having a wife but no children, the man must take the widow and uh, raise up of offspring for his brother. Uh, yeah. So there was a Sadduc some Sadducees came to Jesus. Um, actually, the Sadducees are the people uh, who are uh, in charge of the temple, actually. The high priest also from Sadducees. Uh, and then they didn't believe about the resurrection. They didn't believe the, also the spirits, angels, they didn't believe. So they only believed that only the life is in this world. And then the Pharisees, they were believing those things, yeah, resurrection and also the spiritual things and angels. Uh, so Sadducees came to Jesus and he asked some some a question, and then he said that about Moses, uh, his law. Uh, if um, if a man's brother dies, having a wife but no children, the man must take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Yeah, this is the law. So verse twenty nine. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children. And the second, and the third took her. Mm. Yeah, the second and and the third took her, and likewise all seven left no children and died. Afterward, the woman also died. Yeah, so in Israelites they had their law that uh, if uh, a brother die without children uh, earlier then the other brother, uh, another brother can take care of the, the wife and marry okay. so that uh, he can give us the children, give birth to children for the, the dead uh, brother. So this happened in the seven brothers and then they all died. And then verse 33, in the resurrection therefore Whose wife will the woman be? Uh, for the seven had her as wife. Yeah. So it's somehow a strange question, right? So whose wife would he would would she be? Yeah. In in the resurrection, in the heaven, maybe. Then what did Jesus say? Verse 34. And Jesus said to them, The sons of this age marry and given in marriage but those who are considered worthy to attain to that age and to the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage for they cannot die anymore because they are equal to angels and are sons of God being sons of the resurrection yeah how in this world, the people, uh, they are marrying. Uh, but how about um, how about uh, at the resurrected world? Uh, how the people would be? Uh, they will be like the angel or the sons of God. They don't have uh, those marriage. Yeah. They will live like angels. You know, there is no 
husbands and wives. Uh, so it can be somehow different, uh, different, right? Uh, maybe the life there, it can be different. Uh, so, and then, but then, who, who are the people uh, who are considered, verse 35, who are considered worthy to attain to that age and to the resurrection from the dead, neither married nor given in marriage. Not everyone, but the people who are regarded worthy, uh, worthy to attain the resurrection. Yeah. So he's talking about heaven, where the people who are worthy of resurrection will go. Uh, and there will be no like uh, marriage or um, that kind of physical relationship or, yeah. But then they will be like angels. Yeah. And then, um, Verse 37, but that the dead are raised, even Moses showed in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Yeah. And then he, Jesus was teaching about the um, uh, uh, the, the burning bush uh, that in uh, Genesis where uh, the Moses, he found God in the burning bush, right? And then God introduced himself as I am God of um, Abraham and God of Isaac and God of Jacob. So verse 38, now he is not God of the dead, but of the living. Uh, for all live to him. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you you did not read that part, that passage that I am, uh, God said that I am the God of Abraham and God of Isaac and God of Jacob. I am not the God of the dead. Yeah. God is not the God of the dead, but God of the living. Yeah. Actually, the Israel people, they believed that uh, God is God of Abraham. Yeah. And then even they were, think, they were believing that Abraham is there uh, in the gate of heaven. And even uh, when the Israelites, they died, then Abraham will uh, be there yeah, in heaven. Or even the people who are not uh, worthy to go to heaven, but then even Abraham will stand at the gate of hell, and then uh, he will take the Jewish Jew uh, to heaven. Yeah. When he find a Jew coming to hell, then Abraham will take the person to heaven, something like that. So for, for them, actually Abraham, they believed that he is in heaven. But then Sadducees, they didn't really believe. Uh, but then when Jesus was teaching about this, God said that I am the God of Abraham. I'm not the God of uh, a dead body. You no. Know? I am the God of a alive person. I am God of Abraham. So then with this then um, they, uh, God, uh, Jesus silenced uh, the Sadducees with this um, explanation. Yeah. Mm. So, dead person will uh, resurrect. Yeah. Mm. So, he uh, answered like that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, we need to know about this resurrection. Yeah. All people we will die and we will uh, resurrect. Yeah. We have a spirit, we will go back to God uh, and we'll be judged, right? According to our lives. And then Jesus went uh, to heaven before us. He said that I will uh, prepare uh, the room for you. Uh, 
So he made the way for us to go to heaven through his death. So when we believe in Jesus, uh, then uh, because of Jesus, his, uh, his death, uh, when we believe, then uh, we will be accepted. Uh, we will be forgiven. We will, all our sins are forgiven, right? Then we can be accepted into heaven. So um, in heaven, there will be uh, no more uh, death and yeah, it's just a beautiful world. Yeah. So if we uh, have that hope and we live well, then we will have the great eternal life. Yeah. But then for the disciples, uh, who are going to Emmaus, actually for them, uh, they were just uh, thinking that ah, Jesus' death is the end of everything. Yeah. And then they were just sad uh, and then returning back um, to their place. Uh, then Jesus said that you are foolish ones and slow of heart to believe that the prophets have spoken yeah. Luke chapter 24, uh, it came back to Luke chapter 24. Yeah. You are foolish. Yeah. You are slow of heart to believe all. Yeah. So, uh, but then uh, there are some also prophets and uh, uh, the word which is uh, talking about uh, Jesus' to death. Yeah, the meaning of the death of Jesus. Yeah. So that one, for them, actually, it was very vague. Uh, they couldn't understand the meaning of the death of Jesus. Uh, so that's why their eyes were closed. They couldn't really recognize Jesus. So Jesus said that, verse 26, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? So he was uh, teaching about the meaning of his death. Uh, Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Yeah. So um, uh, beginning with Moses, and all the prophets. Mm, so we know, we also read many times those, right? Yeah. Moses, in the book of Moses, yeah, in the, uh, where, where we can find uh, about the suffering Messiah, uh, who are carrying, who is carrying the sin of the world. Yeah. It is uh, Leviticus chapter 16, right? Uh, let us read uh, Leviticus chapter 16. Verse 20. It says that, and when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place and the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall present the life of God. And Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the life of God and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel and all their transgressions, all their sins. And he shall put them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is in the readiness. The goat shall bear all their iniquities on itself to a remote area, and he shall let the goat go free in the wilderness. Yeah. So this is uh, about scapegoat. Um, Aaron, the high priest, uh, would uh, bring a goat 
and then he he put his hand on the goat, uh, and then he confessed over it all the sin of the Israel. Then the sin will enter, sin will move to this goat, and the goat will carry this uh, sin, and then someone will send it away yeah, to the wilderness. Yeah. So. Uh, the goat shall bear, uh, verse 22, the goat shall bear all their iniquities on itself to a remote area, and he shall let, it, let the goat go free in the wilderness. Yeah. So the goat uh, is called the scapegoat. It's carrying all the sin of the people of Israel. Uh, so once a year, they had the day of uh, um, atonement. And then um, through this liturgy, and uh, they, their sins were moving towards the scapegoat, and then this goat would go to the wilderness, and then they could it could be killed. Uh, it could die there. So that is talking about uh, the Messiah who will carry the uh, sin of the world. Yeah. And then from prophet, right? we can see Isaiah chapter 53, we were um, reading many times, yeah. Isaiah chapter 53. Yeah. So this uh, also is talking about how uh, the servant will suffer for the sins of the world. Verse 5, um, Verse 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. With his wounds, we, were, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Um, yeah, so um, this chapter is really talking about the uh, suffering and death uh, of a servant yeah. and also resurrection. Yeah. So this one was, uh, uh, it's talking about yeah, uh, the sacrifice of Jesus yeah, because of our sin. Yeah. So this prof, prof, prophesies, eh, this word is talking about uh, the Messiah who would uh, suffer for the sins of this world and uh, also resurrection. Eh. So Jesus was uh, opening their, uh, their sight uh, as uh, he was uh, explaining about these prophets, you know, even though it was written, but then when they couldn't really understand it, then the death was just a failure. The suffering was just misery. So their eyes closed. They were just feeling sad. And um, yeah, their, their face was really down. You know? So, they couldn't see the hope. Uh, they couldn't see the future. But then Jesus opened their eyes. Yeah. He was uh, explaining uh, the prophets and the Moses. Uh, and then he uh, made them understand. Uh, then verse 28, Luke chapter 24, 28. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acts as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So they went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed, the bro blessed 
and broke it and gave it to them. And they, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. Yeah. So uh, they were now uh, like uh, they were eating together the dinner, supper. So uh, the Israelites, they had the, the tradition. Uh, uh, they gathered together uh, on Friday evening. The family members, they all gather together and they are, uh, they are eating the bread. Uh, they are breaking the bread. And the father, actually, father is breaking the bread and give it to the children. Uh, and as they are doing, it is meaning like they are one uh, family. Uh, they are eating the, the same bread and they are united. You know? They are one family. So Jesus was breaking it and gave it. Uh, then when they received the bread, then their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. Okay. So Jesus was teaching himself that I am the bread of life. Okay. Uh, so uh, whoever eats my body will have the life. Okay. So it's uh, in John chapter 6, something like that. So Jesus, uh, he, he used to t tell them, I am the bread of life. Okay. So when they were receiving the bread, the broken bread, when they were eating, then they could recognize this broken bread. It is the body of Jesus, broken. So when they recognized the, the suffering of Jesus, uh, then their eyes were opened. Okay? And then they said uh, about, about it, um, verse 32, they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Okay? Did not our hearts burn within us? Why their hearts were burning? When they were thinking about the meaning of the suffering Messiah, uh, which was prophesied before. Ah, the death of Jesus is not something just misery and um, failure or meaningless, you know, but then this was prophesied. It is carrying the, the sin of the world uh, instead of us. It was us who should suffer because of the sin. Uh, we should die. But then Jesus carried uh, our sins uh, instead of us. Uh, this is not his uh, sin, but then it is my sin. Yeah? When they listen, when Jesus was teaching them, and when they understood, their heart was so heated. They were so touched. They were melted. Ah, our Lord died because he loved us. Ah, this, his death is for me. He loved me that much. So when they could uh, realize this love, then their heart was so warm, strangely warm. Yeah. So, um, and then when he broke the bread, then and when they were eating the bread, then they could really uh, recognize Jesus who was with them. Yeah. So uh, for us also the same, actually. Uh, when our eyes are closed and blinded to see the resurrected Jesus, it is when we cannot um, understand uh, the death, the love uh, he gave to us. Yeah. Jesus is alive. He is with us. But then when we, we don't think about this, yeah, 
when we, we don't know about the meaning of the suffering, uh, suffering of Jesus, you know. When we don't really know about the love of Jesus, then even our eyes can be closed. Uh, our eyes can be just dried and cold. And when we are in the middle of maybe suffering, then we don't know, you know how Jesus loves us. And then we are, we dis despair, right? So uh, then our we we cannot really know Jesus. Eh? So we need to be uh, always um, uh, in the love of Jesus. Eh? We need to understand how Jesus loves us. Eh? When we don't know, when we forget, when we don't recognize, then still uh, we are we are uh, we don't recognize the living God. Yeah. So, uh, if we want to really experience uh, the resurrected Jesus, yeah, when we want to be really connected with Jesus, it is when we believe the love of Jesus. Yeah. The sacrificial love of Jesus, when we really believe uh, that one and then hold it in our lives, then we can live with God. We can live with Jesus. Our life can be really strengthened. Our life can be power, empowered. So it is not all, all the people, all the Christians live the same life. But then when we have that faith in the love of Jesus, sacrificial love of Jesus, then the life of Jesus can be inside of us. He can live in us. So we need to live uh, with the life of Jesus, in the life of Jesus. Okay? So that is the truly resurrected life. Okay? Also, we can uh, join this resurrection. Okay? So um, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. We know this also very well. Verse 20, it says that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Apostle Paul's life is really, he lived a new life. Uh, in Christ Jesus, in the love of Jesus. Now I no longer live. I died on the cross. But then I live the new life. Jesus is living in me. So when the disciples took the bread, they eat the bread, right? So we need to also eat the bread of Jesus, the, the body of Jesus. It is receiving the love of Jesus. His broken body. Yeah. We need to receive it with in our heart, actually. It should be um, accepted in our heart. Not only, not, not with the head, but we need to believe in, it, in our heart. It is very important so that we can really uh, experience the resurrection. Yeah. So uh, today, yeah, uh, even though it's uh, already uh, resurrect, uh, this Easter uh, has passed, but then to live uh, uh, in Jesus, yeah, experiencing the resurrected Jesus, then we need to really meditate the deep uh, love of Jesus, sacrificial love, uh, who died, who gave his life for us, so that uh, our life can uh, really experience Jesus. Uh, so yeah, let us end here. So let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this time. Uh, you are the God of the living. Uh, all the people who are believing in you, uh, who are connected with you, uh, we'll have the eternal life 
uh, and the, the one who accept Jesus' love uh, toward us uh, will really experience the, the true life. Uh, Father God, uh, please um, be with us and please uh, open our eyes, open our heart toward your love uh, and we want to enjoy this life uh, in your love and we can really uh, experience you in our lives. Please be with us and please uh, guide our lives um, continually and please raise us to be the true disciples who are uh, carrying your will in this world. Father, please be with us. We thank you for this time. Then I pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.